In the same analogous way that the human eye is capable of capturing light and transforming light into electrical signals that the brain uses to create an image of our surroundings, the human ear uses mechanical waves, pressure waves in the air, to basically transform them into electrical signals and then the brain uses those electrical, electrical signals to create sound. And that's exactly why these mechanical waves are also known as sound waves. So let's discuss how the mechanical wave actually propagates through the ear. Let's discuss the structures of the ear and how the ear transforms the mechanical wave into electrical signals. So the ear can be generalized, it can be broken down into three sections. We have the outer ear, we have the middle ear, and we have the inner ear. Now let's begin with the outer ear. The outer ear basically contains a section known as the pinna or the auricle. So this entire section, including our earlobe, is known as our pinna. Now the pinna, what it basically does is it captures all the energy that is carried by our mechanical wave and it directs that mechanical wave into the ear canal. And because the pinna has such a large surface area, it basically acts to amplify the force that our pressure wave actually creates. So the human ear can detect variations in air pressure known as mechanical waves. The pinna, also known as the auricle, acts to capture much of the energy of the mechanical wave and transmits that energy, that mechanical wave, through the ear canal, which is basically this portion here. So the ear canal is also part of the outer portion of the ear. Now the mechanical wave then moves along the ear canal and towards the end of our ear canal. And at the end of the ear canal, we have the beginning of the middle ear. So we have the propagating mechanical wave, some type of disturbance in the air initiates this propagating wave, our mechanical wave. It eventually is captured by the pin of the ear and directed into the ear canal. And we have this amplification process taking place. The pin of the ear amplifies the wave by about times two. Now, when our mechanical wave travels through this region, through the ear canal, inside the ear canal, we have many air molecules. And as these air molecules vibrate back and forth, they eventually cause the eardrum, also known as our tympanic membrane, which is basically a membrane of a sort, the vibrations of the air molecules inside the ear, that causes our membrane, the eardrum, to vibrate as well. So at the end of the ear canal, the mechanical wave hits and vibrates the eardrum, our tympanic membrane. Now notice that the area of the eardrum is much smaller than the area of the pinna, this outside covering of our ear. Now we know from physics that the pressure outside the ear is exactly the same that the pressure is inside this region. But what is different is our area. Because the area inside our eardrum, the area of the eardrum is so much smaller than the area of the pin, that implies because the force, the pressure is the same, our force must be much greater on the eardrum than on the outside of the ear. And so we have a mechanical advantage. So this concept in physics is known as a mechanical advantage. So not only does the pinna actually amplify that wave, the eardrum also amplifies the wave by increasing the force that is felt on the membrane as a result of that mechanical wave. Now, this eardrum is connected directly to a bone known as the malleus. So inside the middle portion of the ear, we have the eardrum and we have these three bones that collectively are known as the ossicles. So we have the malleus, we have the incus, and we have the stapes. Now, each one of these bones is smaller than the other one. It has a smaller lever arm. So basically, these three 
three bones act as a lever system. And as the force is transmitted from the malleus to the incus to our stapes, our force increases as a result of that decrease in the lever arm, decrease in our displacement. And so that means we also have an amplification process taking place within this lever system. And the force that is created by that pressure wave is increased as we go along these three bones. So we have amplification taking place at the pinna, we have amplification taking place at the eardrum, and we have amplification taking place at these three ossicles, at these three bones. The question is, why exactly do we want this amplification to take in the first place? So recall from physics, whenever a mechanical wave is propagating through air and then it hits some type of liquid boundary, there is a good amount of resistance that exists at that boundary. And to actually transmit our mechanical wave from air into liquid, we have to amplify our force. So basically, inside the inner portion of the ear, we no longer have air, we have a fluid type, a liquid of a type known as the perilymph. And at this air fluid boundary, we have a considerable amount of resistance to the mechanical waves. And to overcome this resistance, we have to amplify our force. And that's exactly, we amplify the force at the pinna, we then amplify the force at the eardrum, and we amplify the force at our uh, three bones, the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. Now, at the pinna, we amplified by about times two. At the eardrum, we amplified by about times 15. And at these three bones, we amplified by about times three. So together, we amplified by two times 15 times three, so about 90 times as much. And that is equivalent to about 20 decibels. So now let's move on to our inner portion of the ear. So the stapes is connected to another membrane that is part of the inner ear known as our oval window. So this membrane connected to the stapes bone is known as the oval window. So as the pressure, the pressure wave hits the eardrum, it causes each one of these bones to basically vibrate and the vibration of the stapes applies a force on the oval window and that causes that window, that membrane to basically vibrate and move back and forth. And as it vibrates, it causes the liquid inside to basically vibrate and forth. It initiates a mechanical wave inside our fluid known as the perilymph inside this cochlear region. So this entire spiral region is known as the cochlea. And as the pressure wave moves into the cochlea, it bounces off and moves back, eventually hitting the round window. The the round window is a second membrane inside our cochlea that basically helps the propagation and the creation of that mechanical wave. So recall that one main difference between air and liquid is that liquid is not easily compressed. So inside this cochlear region, if we didn't have these membranes, the, the pressure wave would not be able to travel because we would not be able to compress that liquid. But because of the vibrating round window and because of the vibrating oval window, we basically have this propagating mechanical wave inside the cochlea. So if the round window or if the oval window becomes rigid, meaning it's not going to vibrate as much. That means our wave inside would not be as strong and that implies we would not be able to hear as well. So the reason we're able to hear well is because these windows, these membranes are flexible and they're able to oscillate and move back and forth. So as the pressure wave is carried through our cochlea, inside the cochlea we have a region known as the organ of corti. And at the organ of corti, we basically have specialized types of sensory cells known as hair cells. And these hair cells contain uh, these extensions known as microvilli. And these microvilli extensions basically are capable of accepting these pressure waves and as a 
result of the vibration of the microvilli, they basically depolarize the membrane of the hair cells. And when the hair cells depolarize, they create an action potential, an electrical signal that basically travels through the cochlear nerve and into the brain. So inside the inner ear, the mechanical wave is transmitted into the fluid of the inner ear via the oval window, the membrane that basically is connected to the stapes that begins to vibrate. As it vibrates, it sends out our uh, pressure wave that eventually vibrates our round window also found in this region right below our oval window. Now, these pressure variations in the fluid cause the hair cells to depolarize and the action potential travels through the cochlear nerve and up to our brain. So let's suppose these are the hair cells that are found inside the organ of corti found inside the cochlea. And as the pressure waves hit these hair cells, the microvilli, these extensions, hair-like extensions, basically vibrate and they cause the depolarization of the cell membrane. And that that initiates an action potential which then thra uh, uh, travels through these axons through our cochlear nerve and eventually into the brain. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is something called the semicircular canal. So inside the person, inside each ear, we basically have three semicircular canals. And each one of these three semicircular canals basically lie along the three different axes, along the X, Y, and Z axes. So the, semi uh, the semicircular canal, just like the cochlea, contains its own fluid, and the fluid in a semicircular canal is known as our endolymph, our endolymph. So as this fluid experiences our variation in pressure, the mechanical wave, this causes the specialized hair cells found inside the semicircular canal. So we see that we not only have hair cells inside the cochlea, we also have hair cells inside the semicircular canal, but these hair cells are slightly different. So basically these hair, uh, these hair cells depolarize and they send the action potential, the signal through its own nerve known as our uh, vestibular nerve. And this basically connects with the cochlear nerve to form this uh, nerve that then goes up to the brain. And the brain basically analyzes and creates that sound that we hear. Uh, now, there are three semicircular canals and they help us with balance and allow us to actually de uh, detect acceleration as well as deceleration.